Okay, got my white in my, in my airbrush, my uh, opaque, the new opaque white, which is great. Again, I mentioned, a I made a comment about checking out that video on the opaque white. I got a little bit of lint that's stuck on here. That's okay. No big deal. Coming with my white here, blow off some of that lint. And I'm going to come in to see how that white comes in on top of that yellow. I'm going to experiment with it a little bit and see how, how thin I can make some little lines coming up. Okay, that's good. That way I can come back in with my stencil again. I'll use a little one this time. careful on this one because any overspray you're doing is really going to kind of kill the stuff you've already added in here. And I've already added a whole heck of a lot. I don't want to get too detailed and too weird, but I kind of like this part because this is just, it's like, you're, it's like everything is now just background. I want to bring back some of those embers that I lost. Now some of this white will reactivate some of these candies, which is fine. I don't mind a little bit of that red coming in. Now what if you want to come in with those white embers now? We can do a couple of those little embers down here, like a little splatter. Remember I did that earlier? You can put those in here, but we're really focused down here at the bottom with them. And I don't mind them going on the outside edge because I'm going to come in and hit them with some tequila yellow. A way to make sure you don't get too much overspray in a piece, aim at your stencil more than the piece. The more your paint is going on the stencil than anywhere else. Should be an ember here. A little bit of a balance in that, not much, but just a little bit of a. You know, I guess we should add a little bit more smoke here. Not too much, just a little bit. Cool, kind of digging that. Normally I step way far back, and I'll, otherwise I'll knock the camera band over. So I'm going to look back and I'll look at it and. and uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to think of how it's going to look when it's clear coated. I want all this stuff to be going on. I want to read good from a distance, but I also want to be able to come up to it and see different things in it. And yeah, I did reinvent a whole lot. And when you said don't reinvent the wheel, I did a whole lot of stuff that you think is covered because the candy that's in it, you'll still see this. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. This is definitely like a hodgepodge technique. Um, I'm going to make this one over here as an example a little bit simpler because this one I started having a little bit too much fun with. So uh, let me come in with that tequila yellow and I'll show you how that works as the final note. We're going to bring that from the outside in, leaving the center core of the white alone. Okay, airbrush all nice and cleaned out. Actually, I left the white in the brushing because I'm going to come in with white next on that, but also in case I get a little too happy. I mean, 
case Preston shows, I'm gonna get a little bit too happy in my colors. So let's come in with this tequila yellow. Now spray it here, you can see the color. It's a common, it's one to one, tequila yellow and lemon yellow. Uh, Cause I didn't want it to be that orange and if you get too much of the lemon, you'll bring a green tone into it. I don't need to do that. I'm gonna blend in this candy. This is just pure candy on the outside in. Now notice that you don't see it over here, but see it's, it's turning those embers yellow. And it's also turning a little bit of that smoke a little yellow. I want that. I don't want this. I don't want the inner, absolute cent, center to be, you know, yellowed out. I want it to stay white, but I do want to bring this from the outside in. I really load in a lot of this tequila. I love this stuff. Actually there. So honestly, that is not even pure white anymore. That's still got yellow in it. But I just wanted all of the different colors all be intertwining. You want a randomness about it. Every now and then I'll do a stylized flame. I think one of my first videos I did with Airbrush Action years ago, back in the 90s, on, uh, actually not in the 90s, probably 2002, it was stylized. It was very like uh, swirly and cartoony. And uh, that was just because I was trying to do something a little bit different than what Mike Lavalli did at the time. And so Mike has his style, a technique as well. So a lot of people say, well, I like this style, I like that style. Try and experiment different styles. Try a bunch of different stuff out there. This has got a little bit of everything in it, this one right here. And then the one we're gonna do next door is gonna be a little bit different also. That's the whole key uh, that, that I'm showing you. What I'm showing you isn't really, I'm showing you examples of styles. I'm trying to show you more of a process. I'm giving you tools you can then turn and make it your own, do something on your own. Because uh, all these techniques, you can do them all together, or you can do just a few of them. It's up to you, but I'm pretty happy with this, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for a little bit. Then I will cover it up so I don't get, because I'm doing green over here. I don't want any of the green to come in here, because uh, green and red, you know, complementary, darkens it all out. I don't need any green in here. So we're gonna cover this up when I come to the next fire. Also prevent me from just accidentally copying it. I wanna do a different style over on this side do, using uh, yellows and greens. Okay, I got this. Panel all masked off now, so I don't get any white overspray all over my, my previous uh, fire. This one I'm gonna do a little bit differently, and it's gonna be simplistic, not just in the fire design of it, but also in the colors. We're only gonna use three colors on this one. We're gonna use a, uh, the lemon yellow candy that's mixed with the 4050, and then we're also going to use uh, white, which is the wicked opaque white, which is already in the brush, and then we're gonna use emerald green, which is also mixed with the 4050, and then reduced with 4011. So, uh, two colors and one white, and that's about it. I might, you know something, I lied, I'm gonna use black. You wanna know why? Because I wanna come back in and do some inclusions in here. So, okay. I still ain't lying, it's two colors and two values. There you go, white, black, yellow, and emerald green. So, let's come in and just start, I'm gonna be using the stencil again. Somebody's got a little paint on here, you wanna blow it off, otherwise you're gonna end up with some serious dandruff problems on your paint job, so. Let me see, how am I gonna do this one? I'm gonna do a little bit different. Let me hold that down here. And then I'm gonna bring this one in. I'll do this. Told you it's gonna be different. Uh, a little bit of a color, a little bit white in there. I'm just kind of sculpting it and kind of having fun with this. You kind of have to kind of see where the design you where you want to kind of go with the design. I'm gonna do a little ember right there and then bring that up, really kind of soft there. Glow there. I had a little white right in here, so I'm gonna I'm 
also going to bring one around like that. It almost has more of an organic, like a leaves or something going on here. So I'll come in and kind of give it a smoky look. Blowing ember up here as well. The whole key to doing fire, and whether it be realistic fire or it's just fire in general, it's the same concept. You're doing a push-pull between the negative and the positive space as far as what your design occupies and what area you're leaving behind. Then you're also doing a light to dark. Then you're also doing, if you're using multiple colors, you have infrared, ultraviolet. So you've got three different push-pulls. Value push-pull, chroma push-pull, and then space or composition push-pull. These things, if, you get, if your space is too cluttered, that's too busy, that's because you're not you know, honoring the, the, the negative and positive space. If it's too dark, you're not honoring the balance of value. If the colors are too muddy, you haven't been paying attention to color theory. So all these things have to kind of go on, on inside of your head. Uh, what's the best way to practice? practice, something like this. Try it with just white and black. I've noticed whenever you bring in colors, it shuts off part of your brain or it diverts it sometimes. I don't care if you've been painting your entire life. That's why black and white always has a different look at different imagery, different sense of, you know, certain artists approach black and white. It's the first way you learn to photograph and then as soon as you get really badass, it's the ultimate way to photograph. So it's, it's at the both ends of the bell curve. In between the color, you know, most big uh, art shows is black and white photography, but that's what you learn with. When you bring color in, it can get confusing. So if you're learning something, leave the color out. You don't need to just do black and white, you can do monochromatic, you know, one color. Uh, when you start doing multiple colors, you might be trying to learn too much at once. It's like trying to learn to juggle by starting with six balls. Now you start with two and go three. That's the way it works. Same thing with realistic fire. Now, this one is much different than the other one. Uh, I want to come in and add a couple of different things that kind of break up the, I don't want it to look too linear. I'm, I'm kind of digging it, but it's not, it's not a fire I've ever seen. So I'm going to add a couple little swirls that'll kind of make it a little bit more like fire in here. And then I'm also going to really, but I want to go all the way to the top. So I'm kind of liking the fact that I've got uh, fire in the top and fire in the bottom. So it's all the way through coming, coming up here. If you like this style over here, you can do this style with the green. And I say, well, you're not doing green, you're doing white, because this is going to be a pure candy fire. The other one, you know, the other ones, all the colors on this one are done with candies. This one over here was half candy and half. Um, opaque. Now you like to bring in the freehand elements like this, little dagger strokes, because it breaks up the monotony of the stencil. The stencil has a real, it's a very cool purity to it, but it's very machine-like. It's very, you know, predetermined. When you add this little, little dagger stroke in there, little screw-ups really add to the design. Kind of digging that. That's looking good. A little bit more color here, a little bit on this side here. Not much. I want just a little bit so that I can uh, bring some yellow from the outside. If I come in with my candy, now the reason I'm worried about where the white is, candy will not show up on black by itself. You may see it at an angle, but you need to have a background. So that's why I want a little bit of that white to be out here on the outside edge. 
I'm gonna hit that. So let me get this uh, white uh, out of the brush. Actually, I'm gonna just put the brush away. I'll use the white a little bit later. But uh, next color I'm gonna come in with is gonna be the lemon yellow candy, which I mixed a three to one ratio, three, you know, three parts candy to uh, one part um, of the 4050, and then uh, add about 5% reducer, stirred it up, of the 4011 reducer that is, stirred it up, let it sit in the cup, 15 minutes, and then put it in the airbrush. I'm gonna come in and just really just blast this whole thing with the lemon yellow, then bring in the emerald green, then lastly, the little, the little white highlights in the center. Okay, got my lemon yellow in the brush, and I'm gonna just make sure it's spraying good, good. And I'm gonna come in from the outside edge, I want even a little bit here, because there might be some overspray, and it might show up. I bring it from the outside in to the design. But I want it to be as the lightest area in the center, because that's the hottest part of the flame. And even though this is kind of weird, it's a really weird and stylized flame, I'm still following the rules. You say, well, what rules? Oh, well, if you're duplicating something from nature, you've got to follow the nature rules of nature. You know, if you're gonna make wood grain, you have to make it look like wood grain by following the, the rules that dictate wood grain. Uh, for fire, it's, it's basically called thermodynamics. Also, fluid dynamics follow it. So, when you understand how fire works, you can actually paint it better. So all of a sudden, now the artists are like, oh, I don't wanna learn physics, physics helps. You can learn observational physics. In other words, you know that fire looks a certain way because there's three elements that fire needs. It needs oxygen, it needs fuel, and it needs um, heat. And so heat rises, that's hence the term, you know, and then you always have fuel, which is basically the, the source. And then heat is dictated by colors. The darker the, the flame, the, the, the cooler the flame is until you get to the ultimate hot flame, which is white. I'm also looking at an angle to see how wet this is getting. I don't want to get too wet, it'll start getting kind of goofy on me. So now the lemon yellow, if you look, if you look at this, you're almost like this is almost kind of a, it has kind of a green look to it. Your eye is referencing this tape, which is a chrome yellow, which is, understand if you have a yellow, your yellow is going to go either direction of the color wheel. So yellow, there's no such thing in paint as a pure yellow. There is in light, in projection color theory, there is a pure yellow, but in reflective color theory, which is the actual concept of paint, the yellow is going to be kicked either side by the other primary. So you're gonna have a red or an orange yellow, you're gonna have a blue or what's considered a green yellow on the other side. And in this situation, lemon yellow is our version of a green yellow. It's got a little bit of a green into it because it's the lemon side. Uh, our, our, our tequila yellow is on the orange side. Now, I did not want to use the tequila yellow on this uh, because I'm going to come in with green and um, and so the you know that would it's a little bit of a complementary you know how do you make green you add blue to yellow and then tequila's got orange and orange and blue are complementaries and all of a sudden they cancel each other out and you get a darker color now that might be kind of cool you might want that dissident kind of a weird funky color going on in there but I just want this to be a very limey greeny green you know slime green poison green whatever you call fire so we're sticking with the, that if I yank this tape off though, you would not see this as being green. You'd see it as being just yellow. But we're gonna come in with our emerald green, which then you will lose, you won't even be you know, worried about the green anymore in this yellow because the emerald green is just gonna dominate the entire image. Okay, very happy with that. And uh, let that dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna go clean this br brush out and get my emerald green. Okay, I've got my emerald green candy in my airbrush, and remember exact same mix we did with the lemon yellow, three to one with the 4050, and then the 5% 4011, stir it up, sit 15 minutes, 4011, not, not the other ones, 4011. So uh, that's been sitting, and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna be really careful, this is a very dark green. Now could I have used um, poison green instead, which is also one of the candies that, that Kratex has in the Candy 2.0 line. I could have, but I, I, I want to keep this simple. I can always blend this and get something similar to it, but I really wanted that emerald green. And when this is cleared, it's really gonna show up nice. Because the outside area here, it's kind of, I'm darkening, it's kind of going away. You'll see it when it's clear coated.
And there we go. Now, uh, let's put a little air on it right here. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to come in with some white again. I'm going to do the white for a very, very thin highlight in the center and kind of bring back some of the, the white that I lost with the, the candy. And then I'm going to hit it with the lemon yellow on top again. I don't want any pure white le being left behind, but I want the lemon yellow to really pop. And it might ble bleed a little bit. The white might actually draw some of that candy up. That's good. One of the few times, people are always like, how do you get rid of ble bleeding? Actually, bleeding is a technique and you can use it. Uh, don't want to get rid of it all the time. There's sometimes I use bleed checker, um, but and sometimes I don't because I actually want the bleed. In this case, I actually want there to be a, an actual physical bleed between the two things, and uh, as long as it's not out of control. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, come in with the white, yellow, and then we're gonna be done. Okay, just wiped it down. You see a little bit of uh, green coming off. And I want to make sure I got some of the overspray off of that. And then it's time to come in with the white. Now I'm going to be really careful here. I don't want to do too much white. I want to lose my green that's in here. So I'm going to just a little bit and see how it's going to bleed and blend. There's a little bit going on there. That's cool. I'm going to come in and freehand this one in. I'm going to bring this guy in, white, more white here, kind of started in that way. This guy down here too, I'm going to do white here. And see how if I really get it white, a little blue comes in. Well, that's because there's blue in that emerald. It's kind of cool. Not a lot, but there's enough to bleed out. So I don't want to get it too wet, otherwise I'll start getting blue flames in here. It'll leach out the dominant color. Now how do we get white to stay on here but not bleed out? Uh, what you do is you come in and you very carefully, you spray what I call dry spraying. I learned this technique years ago on black t-shirts from Terry Hill. You just don't spray it wet. You spray it very, very lightly. Use a lot of air to dry it and it will naturally Apply the white without the, the water or solvent or whatever paint you're using to reactivate. Won't do it. Looks up pretty good. You spray it dry, which means more air than paint. This little guy right here to create a little dot right there. Little dot there. On there. It's kind of cool, I like that. Now when you find something new and interesting that's kind of weird, don't go happy with it, but make sure you disperse it throughout your piece. Otherwise it will be weird if you have one of these here and nothing on the rest of the piece. That just doesn't make any sense. I always tell people when you're experimenting, be careful. If you don't have time to experiment, because you may all of a sudden go, oh, that's really cool. And then you're like, oh crap, i got to do that on everything. Oh. No good deed goes unpunished. Let me grab my little guy, my little stencil here. That way I can kind of maybe do a... a little something in there. Bring some white there. do too much, but man, it gets to, it start, you start having fun, you're like, ah, oh, just a little bit more here and there, just a little more. It's 
So you know, pinching it together, you can create different you know, sizes with this and different shapes. That's why I kind of like this stencil, but I'm good. Now I could just leave this alone and just leave it white on the green. It's kind of a cool look right there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this down here alone, but I'm gonna bring yellow from the top down. So that way you can still see some white, because I like the white that brought the blue in. It's kind of different. I like that little that, that teal that popped in there. And that's kind of cool. So I'm going to bring the candy yellow just down there. And we won't even cut away. I'm just going to grab the other brush real quick. I think I have it here somewhere. There we go. Is that it? No, that's green. Um, OK, uh, we're going to cut away, because i got to go find my yellow. So be right back. Okay, I've got my lemon yellow back in my brush. I, I, it wasn't in another brush, I had to clean the brush out. So I'm gonna come in just from the top and, uh, and blend in this lemon yellow right on top of that white. And then stop it before I get to the very bottom. I want this to be more lemony. I'm gonna really hit this with air because I'm gonna I have a lot of lemon I want to put in there. I don't want it to get too wet, but I want to really want to reactivate the colors underneath. There we go. That's good enough. I think a nice and limey yellow up there, and then it comes down to the white down there. So uh, a little bit different, kind of a stylized version of, of the fire. We're going to um, go ahead and next work on a couple of uh, white flames. We're going to do uh, the black, a black flame, like a smoke flame on white. And then we're also going to do blue uh, flames on white as well. Then we're going to have Chris come in and clear them all, because I'll tell you something, these look good, but they don't look nearly as good as when they're clear coated. So uh, I will see you in the next step.